show that helps you find the next Apple, Google, Starbucks, or company you've never heard of. But if you bought it early enough, it could have made you filthy rich. I'm your host, Andra Nescu. Today our focus is on stocks and life sciences, biotechnology, and experimental drug therapy. A little later, we'll hear from three biotechnology companies listed on the Toronto Stock Exchange, all of which you can invest in and at the same time potentially make some cold hard cash. God bless capitalism. All of our guests are in the process of creating the latest cutting edge drug therapy that could help millions who suffer from the horrors of cancer, Alzheimer's, and stroke. Today's drug and testing could be tomorrow's cure for cancer and in the process, turn that company's stock into, well, you guessed it, the next biggest winner. But now let's introduce you to our first guest. He is the president of Bloom, Burn & Co, Canada's largest healthcare-focused investment bank, and the man who knows most everything about investing in biotechnology. Welcome to the show, Mr. Brian. Thank you, Andrew. Hi. So, can you tell me a bit about your company, Bloom, Burn & Co? So, Bloom, Burn & is Canada's largest healthcare investment banking firm. Okay. So, we are a team of 10 medical specialists, yes. and we are doctors and scientists and pharmaceutical executives, and we use all of our energies to advise investors at a how to pick investments in the, in the public markets. Okay. Um, we also work with a lot of private and public companies in Canada, wow. and we help them attract capital, and we give them advice about mergers and, and acquisitions. Okay. Um, I actually don't think biotech is one of the best places to put your money. It can okay. be, but it's an incredibly risky space. So we tend to mainly collaborate with highly specialized medical investors. Okay who know as much as we do about the risks, but yet also the opportunities in investing in biotechnology. Um, the main reason to invest in biotechnology is, you know, there are hundreds of young companies all curing diseases and discovering new drugs and devices and cures for diseases that plague society. Yeah. And, you know, it's uh, in addition to potentially making a lot of money as yeah, an investor, <laughs> you're also doing tremendous societal good by um, in supporting these types of companies. What biotech companies would have been big winners over the recent past and what would have been their upside? We were early supporters of a great uh, oncology or cancer company called Arius Research. Okay. Um, you know, it's a good example of how even if you're doing, um, you know, discovery medical work that's really, really early stage or maybe 10 years from ever being dosed in a patient, right. um, it's still incredibly valuable work that the pharmaceutical industry uh, values very highly. So. Yeah. Uh, Arius' initial work was done in the University of Toronto system and it spun out into a biotechnology company and they discovered some fantastic drugs that maybe 10 years from now could actually be treating patients. Um, we had financed it with highly specialized investors in Canada and the United States and that ended up being approximately a 600% return for investors when a large company called Roche bought the company for mm -hmm. approximately $200 million. Um, that's again a, an example of a highly scientific company uh, that was a great win for investors. What would you say would be the key factors when looking to invest in a biotechnology company now? What are we looking for? Yeah. Um, obviously you're looking for the qualities in the products that ultimately could make it successful in the marketplace. You're trying to treat patients or diseases where there's no treatments. Right. You're trying to uh, change the paradigm as to how physicians and the insurance industry deals with their patients and solves the problems that they have for their okay. patients. So obviously you're looking for medical products and new drugs that are both safe and efficacious, um, but also maybe ones that could um, uh, potentially save costs elsewhere in the system. You know, with Obamacare right. and even socialized medicine that we have here in Canada, we don't have money to pay for every single designer drug out there. <laughs> so no. when something new comes to the market and it is not only better than what came before, um, but you do it in ways that keep patients out of the hospital or keeps them off of other drugs mm -hmm. or avoids costly surgeries, that is highly valued in the marketplace right now. Yeah. Uh, the other major determinant, for our industry at least, is management. And you'll hear that when you interview um, oil and gas and gold and financial services CEOs as well. Management, management, management. Yeah. Um, the management of these young biotechnology companies often come out of larger pharmaceutical companies. Right. And that's often a good thing because they have a lot of experience, um, not just on the scientific side, um, but also on the clinical, regulatory, and commercial aspects of how medical products can be successful. Brian, what area of biotech is making the biggest discoveries right now? 
There are so many to choose from, but I think yeah. two stand out. Uh, number one is stem cell therapy, okay. where you know all the work that we heard about that were taking place in laboratories are starting to be tested in patients with disease and, as, okay. and starting to make a difference. And we're already starting to see some of the largest pharmaceutical companies um, get into the space, right. which is you know, when biotechnology companies mature and it gets handed off to the largest companies, that's often a good sign and a big sense that the that, that uh, area of science is maturing. The other is in cancer research. We are learning about the genetics of tumors and genetics yeah. of tumor cells. And this allows us to, um, you know, choose patients that will respond to certain therapies. So instead of us just treating all breast cancer patients the same, we can actually look at the genetics of their disease Get and treat them with specific drugs. So for now we're going to take a break, but when we come back we'll have three biotechnology companies that'll try to convince you that their stock is the next biggest winner.